Hi guys, I have a story for you today called How Do Apples Grow? And this story is actually a nonfiction story. It does not have real pictures, but it's going to teach us a lot about how apples grow. This story is by Betsy Maestro, and it's illustrated by Giuliano Maestro. So the, Betsy wrote the words, and Giuliano wrote, drew the pictures. How do apples grow? When you bite into a juicy apple, you're eating part of a flower. Fruit comes from flowers. In the winter time, the apple tree is bare, meaning there's nothing on it. It's hard to imagine it being covered with flowers or fruit. But even in the snow and the cold, tiny, tiny little leaf buds and flower buds are waiting to open. Inside each leaf bud are tiny curled up little leaves. If you take a close peek, see they're curled up together right there. Those are buds. And they're all the parts of an apple flower. Apple flowers are pink and white and sweet to smell. This is the springtime as they start to bud and come out in the flowers. Each flower is the beginning of an apple. And when spring is here, there's lots more hours of sunlight. The days are longer and warmer, and the leaf buds start to open. Tiny green leaves appear on each twig. When the apple tree is covered with leaves, the flower buds begin to open. Up close, you can see bunches of small pink and white flowers at the end of each twig, just like that little girl is looking at right there. Each flower must become, can become an apple, but all the right things have to happen first. An apple flower has many parts and each has a special job to do. So here's the buds. These are called sepals. Around the outside are the sepals. They form a little cup to protect the rest of the flower that's in, inside. If you look real close, you can see a little red in there or the pink, that's the flower, it's protecting them. As the flower blossoms, the sepal opens too. And the pretty colored petals and sweet flowery smell bring many insects and birds to the apple tree. Now you can see the petal and the sepals have come open. These animal helpers, like bees, are needed for the flowers to make fruit. Bees are super good helpers to turn these flowers into apples. Inside each flower are the male and female parts that make the apple grow. The male parts are called stamens. Each flower has many stamens. If you look inside an apple flower, you can see all the stamens sticking up in a circle. So those are those little parts right here that the black arrows are pointing to, stamens in the middle. At the top of each stamen, pollen is made. So this is looking up close at these teeny tiny things. Pollen is the yellow powder. Each flower has thousands of pollen grains. Each grain of pollen holds male cells. The female part of the flower is called the pistil. You can see some of the pistil right at the center of the flower, right here in the middle. This is the green part. It has tiny tubes with sticky tops. At the bottom of the flower, out of, out of sight, hidden in here, is where they meet. And this is where it holds all the female parts. That will become the core of the apple, that part that we don't eat. When we eat, eat, eat the apple, and then we throw the core away. This part in here is gonna become the core of the apple. An apple can grow when the different parts come together. That's when the flower is fertilized. The pollen have to reach the female cells that are in that little ovary pocket. This sounds easy, but it's not. The apple flower can be fertilized only by pollen from a different apple tree. So the bees have to go from this tree to this tree to this tree. They have to take it because the apple trees can't move. They need helpers, the bees, here they come. The bees are some of the apple tree's best helpers. Bees are attracted to the colorful petals, the pink and the pretty colors. They like the smell of the sweet flower juice and the nectar. Bees fly from tree to tree collecting nectar and they will use the nectar to make honey. As the bees gather the nectar, pollen grains stick to their bodies. And when they land on the flowers of the other apple trees, some of this pollen falls off, that yellow stuff, some of it starts to fall off and help the tree. 
then the flower gets fertilized. When that flower, when the pollen falls off onto the new flower, now the petals fall to the ground. The petals are no longer needed. They have done their job. So now we notice all the pretty flowers are gone and we just see leaves. The flower has been fertilized and now an apple can start to grow. Look at how it's changing. It will grow at the spot where the flower meets the stem. Here's the stem and this was where the flower was. Look how it's turning into that apple. It gets bigger and it gets bigger and it forms the apple's core that holds the seeds. They will be protected here. Around the ovary, the rest of the apple is swelling too. So bigger and bigger, that core is the ovary, the middle. This is the white fleshy part that we can eat, the outside. This is a cut of the inside of the apple. Look at the bottom of a ripe apple. So we need to check that out next time you look at one. The bottom of the ripe apple, you can see where the sepals were. That's where the flower used to be. And when the apple is cut open, you can see all the seeds inside. Look carefully and you'll see five little compartments or sections. There may be as many as 10 seeds inside your apple. The seeds are fertilized female cells and they can grow into new apple trees. So now the apple tree must feed the growing apples by using sunlight, water, and air, and the leaves can make a special kind of sugar. This sugar feeds the fruit. It takes about 50 leaves to make the sugar for just one apple. All summer long, so it's hot outside, summer, all summer the apples are on these trees growing bigger and bigger and bigger. And when fall arrives, the apples are almost ripe. During the last few weeks, the apples can feed themselves. They make their own sugar now. The sugar makes the apples sweet. This is a red delicious apple. This one's called a Macintosh. This one is called a Golden Delicious. And this one over here is called a Granny Smith apple. Sunlight helps the leaves and the apples to make food. It also helps change the skin color of some of the apples. Different kinds of apples have different skin colors. Some are red, others turn yellow. Some varieties of apples stay green, even when they're ripe and ready to eat, like those. When the apples are ripe, it's time for picking. If no one picks the apples, they start to fall to the ground. Animals will eat them and might carry the apple seeds to other places. Some of these seeds will grow into new apple trees. Some of the apples may just rot on the ground and after a while, they will become part of the soil. They will help feed the tree. So people are picking them, some are on the ground for animals and some will just go back into the soil. As the fall ends, the trees start to lose their leaves and new buds are already forming. They will be next year's apple. For now, the apple tree's work is over. For you, it's the best part. It's apple eating time. Yay! Again, this was the story called How Do Apples Grow? Before we go for the day, I just wanted to show you three kinds of apples that I have. So this is called a gala apple, which you notice to be more yellow, a little bit of pink in it maybe. This one's called a Granny Smith apple, green. This one's flavor is very sour, tangy, good for pies. This one is a red delicious apple. It's very red all the way around. And if I look at those apples, just like I talked about in the story, on the bottom part, you can see where the sepals were connected, which is where the flowers were on the apple connected to the tree before the apple started to form. And then we had the apples that came out. So thankfully, because of the bees going from this kind of tree over to this kind of tree, we were able to make the apples that we all enjoy this fall. Yum.